now let us move on to elementary signals so what we will do here is we will look at again uh, some of these uh, basic signals that you have already uh, seen in signals and systems so this will be review if you have already seen them and then we will again point out similarities and differences just to reinforce uh, these points just in case we have not paid attention to them. So we will start off with the unit step sequence and then the unit impulse and then the uh, sinusoids. The discrete time impulse is the most elementary of all signals is the simplest discrete time signal you can think of. But since what we are going to do now is we are going to compare each elementary signal with its continuous time counterpart. The discrete time sequence is the simplest one but its continuous time counterpart is really complicated. We will come to that after we introduce the unit step sequence. So the first thing that we want to look at is the unit step and this analogous to the continuous time case this is defined as 1 for n greater than or equal to 0 and 0 for n less than 0 and the picture that is associated with this simple function is this solve once for n greater than or equal to 0 and 0 for n less than 0. And again just to point make a note of this in case you are not already noticed it n less than 0 is the same as n less than or equal to minus 1. So this is the discrete time unit step sequence. The corresponding continuous time unit step function is 1 for t greater than 0 and 0 for t less than 0 and the picture associated with this is it is 0 for t less than 0 and 1 for t greater than 0. But you must have perhaps encountered uh, some slightly different definitions for example u of t could be 1 for t greater than or equal to 0 and 0 for t less than 0. So let me call this as u1 of t alright. So this is a different definition and once you have seen this variation you can also guess. Uh, some of the other variations. So u2 of t could be 1 for t greater than 0 and 0 for t less than or equal to 0. So one more variant can you suggest? very good t greater than 0 it is 1 for t less than 0 it is 0 and that for t equal to 0 it is half then as I always like to say here is my definition of u of t which you will not find in any book. So this is 1 for 
t greater than 0, 0 for t less than 0 and at t equal to 0 it happens to be my lucky number 13 all right. All right, we will come to this in a minute. So, let us focus on the CTFT of U of T. All right, so let me call the CTFT as. U of omega and then if you recall your uh, continuous time Fourier transform U of omega is 1 by j omega plus pi delta of omega okay. So now we have various definitions of U of t and this is the transform of u of t which begs the question of which u of t okay you say this is the transform of u1 of t okay why is it that so okay let us defer on whether that is the right answer or not if you say this is the transform of u1 of t then what is the transform of u2 of t somebody said same okay it is very good 1.12 1 point will not matter very good all right. So, all these things have exactly the same Fourier transform very good. Suppose I take u of omega which is this and then I take the inverse Fourier transform right. I should get back u of t which u of t will I get back? u1 of t okay your favorite unit step function <laughs> all right so let us know yeah go ahead all right so 1 for t greater than 0 and 0 for t less than 0 all right if you look at the inversion integral uh, it is defined for all t correct. So, why do you want to leave out t equal to 0 and leave it undefined All right. So, what is happening here is in terms of the Fourier transform the answer that was said saying all these various definitions of u of t will still give rise to exactly this Fourier transform that is right because one point is not going to contribute to the integral. If you now take this Fourier transform and then if you do the inverse transform remember if you recall what is happening in Fourier series at a point of discontinuity in the signal to what value will the Fourier series converge to to the average value right. So, this is no different from what is going to happen with the Fourier transform all right. So, when you take the inverse Fourier transform of this because 
t equal to 0 as a point of discontinuity what you will get as the inverse Fourier transform of this is u3 of t okay. So this kind of adds some more completion to your understanding of the unit step function in the continuous time domain even though you have seen this in your earlier course these are some questions I do not know if they occurred to you to ask. These are the kinds of questions that you should be asking when you look at these things see these are not complicated questions they are very simple minded and yet when some of these questions were raised even though you had seen them before they were not full or complete understanding. So whenever you lo look at something try to ask these very simple minded questions and make sure you understand things as fully as you can. So that is the reason why I brought up u of t even though you had studied unit step function in your earlier course and also its transform. So these are some of the similarities and differences that can occur between continuous time and discrete time case as far as u of t is concerned at t equal to 0 there are various definitions possible whereas in the discrete time case there is no ambiguity in the definition at n equal to 0.